This is Killer Innovations, a show about ideas, creativity, and how you can innovate. Welcome to the Innovator's Garage, where you learn to create your next game-changing killer innovation. Hello and welcome to this week's Killer Innovations podcast. I'm your host, Phil McKinney. During a recent mentoring session with the chief innovation officer for a major multinational company, the executive was expressing some fears, concerns about their career. Now, he attributes his past success to, quote, being lucky or being in the right place at the right time. Now, his fear was that someone would find this out and that he really wasn't that good, that he really didn't deserve to be the chief innovation officer at this very large multinational company, and that in effect that he was a fraud. Now, this is what we would call the imposter syndrome. Now, the imposter syndrome is a concept that really describes high-achieving individuals who are really marked by this inability to internalize their own accomplishments, give themselves credit for what it is that they have done. Now, the term was coined in 1978 by two clinical psychologists, Pauline Clance and Suzanne Imes. Now, To give you a little bit more flavor about what do I mean by this imposter syndrome. Now, but despite external evidence of their competence, these executives are exhibiting this syndrome that they don't deserve that success. Proof of success is dismissed as luck, uh, just good timing, or as a result of deceiving others into thinking that they are more intelligent and competent than they believe themselves to be. Now, In fact, one of the things that is interesting about the imposter syndrome is is that it's particularly common among high-achieving women, but it applies to everybody. Now, what you may find surprising is it is everywhere inside your organization. And all of us, me included, have struggled with imposter syndrome. Now, you may not have known it as being the imposter syndrome. You may actually be sitting here today listening to me and all of a sudden having that light bulb go off. Now, I can tell you that when I heard it for the first time and I heard it described to me, it was a key moment in my career where I could truly internalize the success. Now, I've struggled it for years. I still struggle with it sometimes when I'm taking on tasks and responsibilities, things that I have never done before. That's when it really kicks in for me. Now, in particularly, the imposter syndrome comes out in spades around creativity and innovation. Now, why is that? It's because innovation and creativity are thought of as gifts. It's not about you. You are just lucky to have been given the gift of creativity, which is absolutely bogus. We've talked about this before in this show. I do not believe that innovation, creativity, the skill to come up with ideas is some special gift that you are given. Everybody has it. Creativity is a skill. It's a skill you can learn. It's a skill you can practice. It's a skill you can become proficient at. But first, you need to get over the imposter syndrome. This cloud that is hanging over your head will hold you back. And it's actually, when I'm in my mentoring sessions, it is one of those things that we have to address early in the process of mentoring when I'm talking to chief technology officers or I'm mentoring a a chief innovation officer or if I'm mentoring a chief executive officer. We tend to have this cloud that hangs over us like, Phil, I want to mentor with you because I'm, I'm, I'm a fraud. I need you to help me with my... No, it's bogus. You're not a fraud. If you're in the innovation game, you are miles ahead of everybody else. So how do I help people get over this cloud of this imposter syndrome? So when I do these mentoring sessions, I walk executives through a series of discussions, topics, to-dos for them to actually work through this. And I'm going to share those with you here today. So you're getting this for free versus executives who pay lots of dollars to get onto my calendar for me to mentor them. Now, I don't take many mentoring clients. And just so you know, 100% of the dollars that I receive for mentoring 
goes to my charities. So I don't take the money. But for the few that I do and I have been involved in, I'm going to give you the trips, tips and tricks that I've used with these executives. So step one, the first thing, acknowledge that others see you as successful. And the way to do this is go and collect up all the notes, your performance reviews from your previous bosses, emails that you've gotten, anything that was a positive email to you. Could be a tweet, could be a Facebook post that says, hey, Phil, you know, you know, your 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 book was great, or hey, Phil, you know, your podcast is really helped. I collect all of these and I look back at them because it it is reaffirming. And these things are things that we tend to try to discount. Now, we have to recognize that these are how people see us. But in our own minds, we're trying to achieve some level of perfection. We see every little flaw in ourselves. Perfection is not the definition of success. And remember, innovation and creativity is messy. While you see the struggle of the process and the stubbing of our toes and having to backtrack and do it over again, Now, we may attribute that to, I don't know what I'm doing. And that's a sign of being a fraud. It is not a sign of being a fraud. Others see the end result, but they see that as the success. So collect up these notes. Review these notes regularly. Go back through the folders. I do this all the time where I've gone through and I've collected up comments from people who've listened to this show back when we started in the early days in 2005. And I can tell you, Those early comments that people were saying, hey, Phil, I tried what you said in the show and it really worked and it helped me get my idea funded by my boss. Those are some of the most important things to me. I collect those into folders. I go back and look at them. That's what motivates me to continue to do this. And it helps me deal with this, you know, oh my gosh, I'm out here trying to tell people how to be more innovative and more creative. Do they really know that I'm a fraud? It's this imposter syndrome. I struggle with it. I know you struggle with it. Everybody struggles with it. So I review these notes regularly. Do not discount them. We can fall into a trap that says, oh, I am such a good fraud that I've hidden the real me. I've got this facade in front of me. And so therefore, they are, they're fooled. I've got them fooled. I've got them hoodwinked. They don't see the real me. Don't fool yourself. No fraudster is good enough to be able to do it consistently. And with, you know, in my experience of getting notes and positive performance reviews and promotions and pay increases and and all of those things, that has been, um, you know, has been proof that over time the work I do is I is delivering value to others. People see the value that I'm delivering. So don't cheapen what other people have shared with you. The emails, the little notes, the cards, the, the little tweet with acknowledgement, the Facebook thumbs up. We are, we're all out there trying to look for confirmation acknowledgement. Don't discount it. Don't cheapen what other people have offered up as compliments and comments to you by saying, oh, I am such a good fraud. It's not about you. They see you as valuable. Those comments are true and they are heartfelt. So see yourself on how others see you. So again, go back, collect up those notes. You don't need a big complex process. You know, I typically like, in, you know, back in the early days of the podcast, I would simply, you know, post them or print them out and put throw them into the folders. And in fact, if you want to go see some of those early notes, hop on over to killerinnovations.com, scroll down the page a little bit to the right-hand side. You'll see a section that we post up there that is I think it's titled something like, you know, what others are saying or what people are saying about the show. And those are some of the collections of the comments that we've had over the 12 years now going into season 13 of the show. So, and you can actually click on them and they'll update. There's probably, oh, I don't know, I'm going to guess a couple hundred comments that are in there that people have sent to us. So you can read those, see what other people say. 
And in we all get those. We get those from our bosses or whatever. So collect those notes up. Use those as kind of reaffirming to yourself as to the value that you're delivering. And use that as step one to get yourself out of this imposter syndrome. This thing that is holding you back from really being able to unleash your creativity and create those innovations. Don't let the imposter syndrome be that boat anchor. So we're only at step one. We're going to talk about this for the rest of today's show. So don't go anywhere. We're going to be right back after this commercial break. This is Killer Innovations, a show about ideas, creativity, and how you can innovate. Welcome to the Innovator's Garage, where you learn to create your next game-changing killer innovation. This week, we're talking about how to overcome imposter syndrome and to unleash your creativity. We covered step one in the last segment. Let's get going on to step two. Step two is practice positive affirmation. Now, through his books, Dale Carnegie introduced positive affirmation, or some will call it positive self-talk, as a tool to help change your perspectives on yourself. This is talking yourself up, talking about the positives that you bring. Think about those things that you want to be better at. Now, we're very good at negative talk. Humans have this ability to take little threads, little bits of criticism, and wrap it all up into, I'm no good. I'm not uh, successful. I'm a failure. So the imposter syndrome is really based on this negative talk that we've built it up and that we've started to believe. So what are you to do? How do you do this kind of positive affirmation? First off is write down a set of positive statements that you will speak out loud. This is the key point. Writing them down, thinking about them, or reading them on a piece of paper silently doesn't help. Now, you're going to feel foolish when you start saying these positive statements out loud. But trust me, if you do it every morning, you say it out loud, therefore you kind of reaffirm yourself, you hear it audible because you're saying it out loud, and therefore you kind of reinforce that uh, those positive thoughts about yourself. So... How do you do this? Well, you write them all out. You're going to speak them out loud. Now post them someplace. In my case, post them on the mirror in the bathroom. So as I'm getting ready for work every morning, going through and just stating these things out loud. Very, very important. Now, what do you say? What are some, you know, here are some quick examples. Now, these are not mine. These are ones that I've uh, generalized, ones that I have actually found online. And I kind of Go out onto Google and I'll collect up this list. But here are a few that I think could be interesting. Now, they may not fit you. Tweak them, change them. But you should have a list, I don't know, of 8 to 10. Some of those should be tied to your creativity, your ability to innovate, your desire to be in the innovation game. Now, you may have other ones about your marriage, your children, you know, career success, things that you are trying to do to to self-improve. But here are some that I think could be a good candidate list around your creativity. First one is, is standing there at the mirror, looking at yourself, saying this out loud. Creative energy surges through me and leads me to new and brilliant ideas. I'm going to say that again. Creative energy surges through me and leads me to new and brilliant ideas. Now, you may think that that's silly or sounds a little pompous, but you're trying to pump yourself up. You're trying to, it's the confidence that you have. Now, you will say statements that you do not feel. Part of this is positive thinking to counteract the negative thinking, to counteract the imposter syndrome that's creeped into everything that's about you. So again, the first one, creative energy surges through me 
and leads me to new and brilliant ideas. Now, you may like this one. You may not. Your call. It's one that I think could actually be pretty positive. Second one, my ability to conquer my challenge is limitless. My potential to succeed is infinite. Again, I'm going to say that again. My ability to conquer my challenges is limitless. My potential to succeed is infinite. Now, why do I like this one? Because face it, innovation and creativity is about conquering challenges. It's conquering problems. It's conquering opportunities. It's looking at things in a unique and different way. And that ability to conquer those challenges should be limitless. We are naturally creative. We can come up with all kinds of great ideas. The third one is, is I believe in myself. Do you truly believe in yourself? Say that. I believe in myself. I believe in myself. If you're listening to this program, you obviously believe in yourself because you're listening to this program to improve your own ability to be more creative. You've already taken that first step. So how do you come up with this list? Well, you can go search on Google. You'll find loads of sites with positive affirmations that you can use as inspirations. But tailor them. Don't just clip three of them out, write them on a piece of paper and stick them up. Write them out. Think about them. Think about the wording. Think about what it is you want to do long term for your success. Also, don't do it just in the morning. I use the morning routine as just kind of clockwork. You know, there's a certain routine, whether, you know, fortunately with my beard, I don't have to shave, so I save a little bit of time there. But whatever your normal morning routine is, write out these positive affirmations, put them on the mirror, say them to you while you're brushing your hair, your, your, your personal grooming practices in the morning, or right before you're all dressed, you're looking sharp in the mirror before you walk out the door, say those. But don't do that as the only time. In this case, I will actually use them and have a collection of them to use, like, for instance, just before I start a workshop. I usually go off into the hallway, get away from the workshop before I'm going to do the kickoff, and I'll run through these self-affirmations, these positive self-talk to get myself kind of pumped up. If I'm going into a stressful situation, I'll do the same thing. Like if you're going to go in, you're going to pitch an idea to your boss, this would be a great time to kind of pump yourself up, positive self-talk. You know, I am, I do believe in myself. I am positive about myself. I do see myself as highly creative. I do think that these are great ideas. Don't go in with, I'm a fraud. I hope it doesn't ask me the wrong question. And therefore, I'm going to stumble and, you know, they're going to realize that I'm not as good as they think that I am. Use these points to kind of pump yourself up before you go into these stressful situations. And trust me, it helps. I've been doing these for years. Now, I will also admit that I am not as disciplined as doing it all the time. And when I find myself kind of getting into this negative talk and, you know, feel like, you know, I'm not doing or achieving what I think I should be achieving or I'm down on myself, when I go back to these points and and do the the positive self-talk, I actually feel it. I feel that, that energy coming back. I feel that confidence coming back. I feel that ability to go off and do things that I thought were impossible. And so, trust me, these work. Give yourself 30 days. Do it every day for 30 days. Trust me, at the end of 30 days, you will see the results and you will keep going. So, we're going to keep on. We're going to take a quick commercial break. We're talking about how to overcome the imposter syndrome and be more creative. And we'll be right back after this commercial break.
This is Killer Innovations, a show about ideas, creativity, and how you can innovate. Welcome to the Innovator's Garage, where you learn to create your next game-changing killer innovation. Before we hop back into this segment, I want to acknowledge and thank our sponsor today, which is Zoom. Zoom does video collaboration technologies that we've been using here in the studio for the last oh, year and a half or so. Uh, Zoom was a technology sponsor and then stepped up and they're now a financial sponsor also to the Killer Innovation Show. Now, in addition to this, I use Zoom in my day job. I am in Zoom every day, multiple times a day, working with, collaborating with my innovation team scattered all over the world. And it's the first video collaboration technology that actually helps creativity and innovation. It helps teams do better collaboration, better innovations, better ideas, and better results. I've tried them all. I've tried screen sharing products. I've shared other kinds of video collaborations. Zoom is the tool we use. It's the tool that we believe in. And as, as, as a sponsor, we only take on sponsors for products and technologies that we use every day and therefore believe in. So check it out. We're not the only ones. Gartner recently ranked Zoom in the Magic Quadrant for web conferencing technologies. Recently, it was ranked in the is the number one video collaboration technology um, in iTunes. You can run Zoom on your mobile phone, your iPad, your laptop. You can do entire rooms, collaboration rooms built around the Zoom technology. So check it out. Give it a try. We have a free account for you that allows you to work with up to 50 video participants at one time. You can actually do a call where you have 50 people participating and you can collaborate and brainstorm. So check it out. Hop on over to KillerInnovations.com slash Zoom to find out more. So this week we're talking about how to overcome imposter syndrome and be more creative. So step number three, failure doesn't make you a fake, does not make you a fraud. Remember, the best basketball players missed most of the shots they take. Professional baseball players only get on base about a quarter of the time. The best stock traders lose money on most of their trades. The presidents get things wrong all the time. And the best football teams inevitably lose. Failure is part of the innovation process. and We've talked about this so many times. Go back. There's lots of shows on failure, fear of failure. There's lots of blog posts over at philmckinney.com on failure and how to overcome failure and how not to think about failure as a negative. In fact, in the innovation game, failure is a positive. Failure is the learning process. In fact, when I was CTO at Hewlett Packard, we were first starting the innovation program office. I put a program in place that if a project team got an idea and maybe got it through its first phase of funding, and then it just wasn't going to work out. It wasn't going to achieve the results, or we've proved that the hypothesis was, was invalid, whatever it was, and therefore we killed the project. Now, many people would view killing a project as a negative. In our case, we viewed it as a positive. We threw these big parties. I would hand out bonus checks for, for projects that got killed. The point was to, to, to put the, the positive spin or the positive perspective on failure. Failure is not a negative. Now, the problem is we tend to overemphasize failure. Failure doesn't mean you're an imposter trying to play the innovation game. The fact that you are listening to the show and in the game puts you miles ahead of the others. What I find is one of the best ways to deal with failure is to share it. Talk about it. Do a post-mortem. Look at the failures hard. Look at the learnings you got out of it. And recognize that they are not a proof of being a fraud. It's not about being an imposter. They are proof that you tried. Look, we all fail. No one is immune. If I sat here and wanted to say, okay, I'm going to do a series of shows and walk you through every one of my failures, I would not have to worry about coming up with show content 
for the next five years. I could literally fill every show, one hour radio show, once a week for 52 weeks for five years, and I wouldn't even put a dent. And those would only be the big major failures, much less a little stubbing of the toe. So look, we all fail. We all fail. So get over it. The problem with failure is, is we've got this perception of what perfection is. And we didn't achieve perfection. Well, if you achieved that perfection, you'd be better than everybody on earth. This failure mode of thinking about it as being an imposter is actually a way for you to think about yourself and kind of try to raise yourself up. We all fail. Accept it. Get over it and move on. Failure doesn't make you a fake. Look at your failures. Do that post-mortem and recognize that they are not proof. They're proof that you tried. So just put together a list of all your failures and look at them honestly, that they're not a true like proof of that you're no good, that you're an imposter. They're just proof that you tried. And in the innovation game, you better be trying. Step number four, take action. The imposter syndrome lives in the, it's kind of a mental exercise in your head. It's an abstraction. It cannot survive when you take action. So what do you do? Create a project that will require you to be highly creative, highly innovative. Now, this doesn't have to be related to work. But come up with a project where you've got to solve a a hard, hard problem. Right? Read through the, uh, the, the, the news of the industry that you're in. Find a problem that somebody else has identified. Take that on as your project. Exert yourself in the form of being highly creative. Now, this step of taking action proves that you are not an imposter. You are not a fraud. Now, this project can be literally about anything, but then share it. Talk to other people about this project that you're taking on. Write about a blog. Post it on Facebook. Tell the world what you're doing around this project. Let others see it. Now, through this process of sharing, you might get other people excited about that project and to join. You might get people who just want to watch and hear. So write it across as a series. Write it out as, I've got, I think there's this problem and I'm going to, I want to, and here's some of my ideas that I'm going to work on. And then another blog post. Well, here's what I've proven out and here's what's failed. Here's what's worked out. Here's where I think we, I might be able to find a solution. Put it all together. Share it. You don't have to do it on the blog if that really kind of freaks you out. Share it with a friend. Share it with a mentor. But take action. Exercise your creativity. Go work and exercise that creativity and innovation. And success does not mean you found the solution. The success means you've taken the action. Right? So don't let yourself get all wound up on needing to come up with this idea and and the only constitution of success is that you successfully found an answer. Remember, as I've said many times in this podcast, it's in my book, it's in every one of my speeches and workshops. Ideas without execution are a hobby. And I'm not in the hobby business. It's real easy to have an idea and write it in a book, write it on a list, write it on a flip chart, stick it on a post-it note. Execution, action, is the proof that you are creative. It's not the, the, the fact that you had the idea. It's that you've taken action. You've done something with it. You tried. may not work out. Not every idea does. A top-notch innovation team only sees roughly one out of ten of what I would call highly qualified ideas make it successful. At HP, we would look at 2,000 raw ideas a year. 2,000 ideas a year. And we would launch two as products. 2,000 ideas a year to get two products a year. One million new products coming off the innovation team. But it's action. It's doing something. It's actually moving the ball forward. It's actually trying to see 
if we can make that idea a reality. So, again, take action. It's the best way to dispel this imposter syndrome and to prove to yourself that you are highly creative. So stay right where you're at. We're going to come right back. We're going to wrap up this discussion on how to overcome the imposter syndrome and be more creative. And we're going to be right back after this short commercial break. This is Killer Innovations, a show about ideas, creativity, and how you can innovate. Welcome to the Innovator's Garage, where you learn to create your next game-changing killer innovation. Welcome back. This week, we've been talking about how to overcome the imposter syndrome and be more creative. The challenge with the imposter syndrome is, is that if you let it go on and not challenge it, it can be debilitating. It can be an anchor that will prevent you from achieving career success, personal success. Uh, It actually has a way of infecting your everyday life, your life with your significant others, your children if you have them, your parents, your friends, because we tend to then roll it into just an overall negative perspective of ourselves. Those who do not attack it will find themselves on, on their deathbed wishing they had tried. You know, I wish I'd been more successful. I wish I had been more this, that, whatever. You need to attack it. It is hard to get past it. Trust me. What tends to trigger this uh, imposter syndrome is some form of outside criticism. Maybe you had a, a dictator as a boss earlier in your career or a teacher who was hypercritical or... Um, a parent who is hypercritical, or a or a, a sibling. Uh, typically, they're the older sibling, but a sibling who is hypercritical of you, right? At first, criticism we get, we fall back. We we it's shocking, and we put more value into criticisms than we do into positives, right? We hear from people like, "Hey, doing a great job. Hey, here's a promotion. Here's a bonus. Here's you know stock. Whatever it is." We tend to discount that. When we hear criticisms, we we overweight it, meaning we put more importance on the criticisms than we do on the positives, right? And so from that standpoint, we've got to attack this imposter syndrome. If you do not attack the imposter syndrome, your creativity, your ability to innovate, your ability to come up with new ideas for product services or whatever it is you're working on will be hampered. You have to get over the imposter syndrome. And let me just reinforce this. I've said this a lot during this week's show. You are not a fraud. You are not a fraud. You're not an imposter. The fact that you're listening to this show is this one of many steps that you've proven that you are creative, you are innovative, because you've taken action. Believe it. But let me recap what I've shared with you, the four steps to help you fight this imposter syndrome. Step one, acknowledge that others see your success. When you get those notes, you get those confirmations, write them down, stick them in a folder, and review them. And give them the proper weighting they deserve. Don't overweight the criticisms, the positives. Give them the weighting they deserve. Step two, Practice positive affirmation. Write out a set of affirmations, post them on your mirror in the bathroom, and repeat them to yourself. Say them to yourself. And don't limit it to just doing that in the morning when you're going into stressful situations or maybe when you're having lunch by yourself. Say them to to yourself again. Step number three, failure doesn't make you a fake. Failure does not make you an imposter. We all fail. We all try and fail. Look at failure for what it is. It's proof that you've taken action, you've taken steps, you're trying, you're in the game. Professional sports players, 
get comfortable with the fact that they're going to fail taking the shot. They're going to fail the the uh, being getting on base in, in baseball. Um, we see big, you know, executive failures. We see companies fail. There's failure all around us. Don't overemphasize it. Failure is normal and does not prove that you're an imposter. And step number four, take action. Take what you've listened to today and do something about it. Just don't sit back and read this or listen to this and go, okay, I get it. No, take action. Tomorrow morning, day one, for you to transform that thinking that you are creative, you are innovative, do it. Don't shuffle this to the side. Tomorrow morning is day one. So I hope you found today's topic um, helpful. Let me know. Uh, Drop me a note. Just send me a note at phil at killinnovations.com. I read all those emails. Those come directly to me. They're not filtered by anybody. That's your easiest way to get a hold of me. Visit the show notes over at killinnovations.com. We'll have some links to some articles that uh, I think will be helpful to you. Uh, So check those out over at killinnovations.com. Follow me over on Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn. If you're going to join me or you want to connect on LinkedIn, that's great. Just tell me that you're a listener to the show and I'll accept the request. I get literally hundreds of LinkedIn requests a week. Most of them I do not accept if I don't recognize the person's name or they don't belong to the Kill Innovations group on LinkedIn. Um, But if you connect with me on LinkedIn, you want to connect, just let me know that you're a listener to the show. I'll accept the the LinkedIn request. Okay. Uh, Check out innovation.tools. It's the online store. You can find books, resources, materials over there. So check that out, innovation.tools. It's a store that we've created by innovators, for innovators, for creatives, to give you the tools and, and resources to help you really go out and create those next game-changing innovations. If I have one favor to ask, could you hop over to iTunes and write a review or write it wherever you get your podcasts? As I mentioned in the show about all those positive comments, those came from a variety of sources. Some of those are ones that when people write the reviews, they clip them and sent them to us. We greatly appreciate them, and we post them up on KillerInnovations.com. You can check those out. But Could you just post a review, hop on over to iTunes or wherever you get your podcast, leave us a a rating, give us some feedback, give us some comment. It's a big help to us to know how to improve the show and it lets others know about the show. So uh, as we wrap up, I want to remind you, don't let the innovation antibodies get you down. Don't let the critics get you down, whether you're suffering from imposter syndrome or you're just feeling the pressure on a new idea. Do not let the innovation antibodies get you down. Go out there and change the world one innovation at the time. With that, we're going to sign off for this week. We'll be back here next week live. Podcast comes out on Tuesday. I really, truly appreciate the time out of your busy schedule to join us here on Killer Innovations on the BizTalk Radio Network. We'll talk to you next week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.